By the end of this film, the overall theme and message really did penetrate my heart. The time that we have on this earth is precious, and be sure to use that time wisely. And goddamn do I want that two hours back. So Old tells the story of a group of people stuck on a desolate island and they realize that they are beginning to age rapidly. What's up everybody? Well, M. Night Shyamalan is back in the theaters yet again with his newest film, Old, that is based off of a graphic novel called Sandcastle. I, for one, have never read it. I'm not familiar with the story. And I didn't even watch the trailers to this film. I just knew new M. Night Shyamalan. I've got a rocky relationship with him. Love his older stuff like most of us do. And since the visit, he's been on a bit of an up Tick. I actually like Glass more than a lot of people do, so his last three films to me are all winners. Does this continue that streak? No. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just get into it right now, guys. Now look, I, with it being said that I skip a lot of movies that I know I'm not going to like, and I certainly avoid a lot of the real genuine stinkers most year, Old is the worst movie that I have seen thus far in 2021. By a lot. So getting into the positives of old, honestly, the only thing that I can really say that I appreciate about this film is that I do like the whole concept. On paper, and I'm, I'm sure quite literally on paper, the graphic novel is probably very interesting, and I'm sure if I read that, I would probably see a much better version of this concept brought to life. But the concept of a group of people being stuck on this desolate island, they're beginning to age rapidly, there's weird supernatural things going on that they can't explain, they can't escape, they don't know why they're there, they're trying to figure out both why they're there and how to escape, if there is any way. That is a very good concept for something. I don't know if it was necessarily a good concept to flesh out for a two hour movie, I'm thinking like maybe a Twilight Zone episode or a short film or a graphic novel, but I do like the concept that he was going for. Yeah, just execution. Something we gotta talk about, M. Night. Mom? I'm, I'm right here. Now moving on to the negatives, and woof. This movie has some of the most abysmal dialogue that I have heard in a very long time. Not only is it poorly written, but it's poorly delivered by the actors, and extremely poorly directed by M. Night himself. One of the biggest jobs of a director is to get the best performances out of your actors and to navigate them through your script, which he himself wrote, and make sure that all the dialogue that they're giving is hitting the right beat, the right rhythm, they're pausing at the right times, they're looking at the right character when they're delivering this, they're giving the right emotions whenever they're delivering this, whenever that's applicable. None of that is here. It's, it's some of the most cringy, clunky, non-human dialogue that I have seen in a movie in a very long time. It literally sounded like they were all sitting around a table reading the script and just dubbing over the video that we were watching because no emotion when you needed emotion. The pauses and the way that they transition from sentence to sentence is just odd. I mean, things that you just don't typically see in a movie. You see here and you're like, what? Why is this so weird? Perfect example, one of the first scenes of the movie, like in the first 20 minutes, there is a woman who collapses in the middle of this dining hall. She's fucking convulging on the ground like she's an extra in Jacob's Ladder. And then the scene proceeds like this. I'm a doctor, what can I do to help? My wife has epilepsy. I am a nurse. My name is Jacob. And there's multiple scenes throughout the movie that goes that way. It's just like, I are you all fucking robots? Are, are, is this the twist going on that none of these people are real and they're about to take over the earth at the end? Because I'm not believing any of this shit. And while I already touched on it slightly, this concept does not stretch itself well to a full length film, or at least M. Night did not deliver it in a way that makes it feel like it should be delved out into a full hour and 40 minute, two hour film because there's really no pacing in this movie whatsoever. As soon as you are introduced to the people, introduced to the concept, they're dropped on this beach, and then madness ensues, it's just an hour of events. There's not really any through line, there's not really any built-in dynamic to where things are building and tension is rising. It's just, okay, things age rapidly here, now let's just do that 30 different ways over the next hour. And by the third or fourth time, you're like, we get it, people age here. Are we going somewhere with this? Is there 
Is there ultimately going to be more reveals? Is there more going on besides the aging thing? Nope. Just strap in. You're going to see people age rapidly over and over and over and over again for the next hour. And it's to the point where the movie doesn't even pause to really explore the impact of the things that are happening. There's literally a five minute stretch, maybe even a three minute stretch to where all in that, that span of time, two characters that are mentally six years old and now have adult-ish bodies, have sex in a tent, what? get pregnant, give birth to a stillborn baby, and then a guy separate from the situation starts having dementia, grabs a knife and starts stabbing the fuck out of one of the other characters. And you're just like, what the? I'm still on the first one trying to figure out why the fuck that's in the movie. Now we're all the way over here. And let's talk about that for a second because the logic of this movie is all over the place. They try to be very scientific here. They try to be very grounded with the real world implications of what would happen if your cells are rapidly aging inside of you about, you know, your wounds close very quickly, almost instantaneously. You know, you, you have fully reproductive organs within hours. If you're a child, you're able to get pregnant and give birth within Minutes, uh, all of these things where it's like, okay, I understand what you're saying here. So by the timeline that you have set up, like a day is like two years. So, you know, minutes are this fast, hours are this fast. I'm with you. And then there's other parts of the movie that just completely negate that. There's literally a scene where they are trying to get you to understand that if you get cut with a rusty blade, within seconds, that rust has now penetrated your bloodstream and now you are eating you're being eaten from the inside out by this poison that the rust ha has given you, which is a real world thing. I mean, you know, tetanus, all that shit. Okay, I get it, cool. But earlier in the movie, you were literally giving damn near open body surgery to somebody and they healed up within seconds. No infection there, you know, no, no ramifications there using this bullshit knife that's been sitting in the sand on this crusty ass beach to cut your ass open with. Nope, you're good. And going along with that, the whole aging thing, they don't even really hammer that home in the right way. I mean, you have these children, there's two young children and one slightly older child that within the second act, they go from being six years old and I don't know what she like, eight, nine years old to being, you know, 18, 20, something like that. But the adults look exactly the same. I don't know if they tried to explain that away with some bullshit line of dialogue, but by the end of the film, when you're supposed to start feeling emotional about people literally going through their entire lives in an afternoon, and, and by the end of the day, and characters start to drop off because they've reached the end of their lifespan, but they look like they're fucking 30, and it's like... <laughs> What? I don't know if it was a budgetary thing to where they couldn't afford the makeup or the prosthetics to really age up these actors. I don't even know why they didn't go the route of recasting them two or three times like they did with these kids where they're a six year old version, there's an 11 year old version, there's an 18 year old version. They didn't even go that far, but it just, it's weird to wrap your mind around half of the cast aging very visibly and the other cast just aging on the inside. I also didn't really like or get invested in any of the characters. Part of that's because of the dialogue, because even the ones that are written to be at least somewhat investable, you really don't care because they just don't come across as real people, but just such an odd group of people stuck on this island and none of them really stand out. I mean, all of them are just kind of regular, bland characters. I mean, even the kids, even the kids that are going through this extreme transformation, going from six years old to adulthood in a day, they don't do anything compelling with that to make them like these rich characters. I mean, you had two of them that were mentally six years old that just experienced sex, <laughs> had a child, lost that child, and that has no ramifications whatsoever on their character. No ramifications in the story, no kind of thing that they need to explore, or some kind of a trauma they have to go through in an afternoon. Like, like that's all stuff just on paper that could make this movie so much more compelling. That's just textbook character stuff. Old doesn't even bother with it. I mean, you even have a random guy in here that's just like, the daughter walks up, she's like, oh, I know him, he's a famous rapper. What's his name? Mid-size sedan. I'm gonna say that again. Mid-sized sedan. I'm not a rap guy, but I tend to think a guy that's trying to pull off that name as a gangster rapper would probably get his ass beat on principle. And then let's talk about 
the twist. And I'm not going to get specific. I'm not going to tell you what the reveal is. All I will tell you is that, at least for me, and for those that are going to enjoy it on a level that I did, which is not very much, by about the middle of this film, you kind of just settle into your seat and you go, okay, I'm just going to wait for the twist. I'm just going to wait for the M. Night Shyamalan reveal. Maybe that'll make things better. Maybe he's got something cool up his sleeve that will make this worth some of the, the shit that I've just had to trek through for the past hour. And you get to the end and it's like, Okay. And M. Night, as a director and as a writer, doesn't even have the ability to end the film on the right note. There is at least two different spots in the last 10 minutes of this movie that feel like the perfect natural conclusion. Okay, like you start to get up in your seat, you're like, okay, the credits are going to be in three, two, one, and another scene. And then that scene starts to go on for a little bit. You're like, okay, it's about to get out oh, three. Oh, and he's still going on. It's just like, dude, end this misery. To be quite honest with you, I don't know what the reception of this movie is going to be. I mean, Shyamalan tends to be very divisive. Even movies like Glass that I actually really liked. There was a lot of people that thought it was absolutely abysmal. Some people that were kind of in the middle on it. This might be along the same lines and I'm just really on the negative side of the camp. I really don't know, but I'll just tell you that everything that this movie tries to do, to me, it fails miserably. Everything aside from that original concept, which isn't even something I could give him credit for because it's based off of another work, it just fell on its face. I mean, I see everything that he's trying to do here. I see everything that this movie is trying to come across with and trying to give you with the themes and, you know, appreciating life and spending the time that you have the way that you should be spending. I get all of that. I just think that the movie fails with getting all of that across. And if I can see what you're doing because of how badly you're failing, I don't think that's what you wanted me to walk away with. I mean, for Christ's sake, we had Adam Sandler's click give us almost the exact same thematic message about value of life and did it a hundred thousand times better than this movie did. An Adam Sandler comedy did a better thematic expression of a story than an M. Night Shyamalan thriller. Wrap your head around that. Overall guys, didn't enjoy this at all. I'll be honest with you. I have no intentions to ever rewatch this. Um, and, I mean, some of you might walk away liking it. I've already had a couple people comment on my Facebook post like, oh, I actually thought it was really good, but you know, I'm looking forward to your review. Cool. I mean, some of you might like this. Some of you might, maybe if you read the graphic novel, you'll enjoy it. I, I don't know. But for me, I would not recommend this to anybody, especially if you're somebody that's already rocky on M. Night Shyamalan. I mean, I have not seen After Earth, The Last Airbender, or Lady in the Water, which tend to be his, his ones that people shit on the most. I plan on watching them so I can do a ranking this weekend. But with that being in mind, this is the worst M. Night Shyamalan movie that I've ever seen. So if you're a Shyamalan fanatic or if you absolutely love the graphic novel that this is based off of, maybe just temper your expectations a lot and give this thing a chance. But for pretty much everybody else, I'm going to recommend you just outright skip it. So what do you guys think of M. Night Shyamalan's old? Are you somebody that walked out hating it like I did? Are you somebody that actually loved it and you think that I'm missing something? Try to be respectful. Don't be a, a pretentious douchebag when you tell me down below. But please, by all means, have the conversation with me down below. Tell me what I might have missed with this film. Or do you just think it's one of those things, some people like it, some people hate it, but all opinions are correct because that's the right way to look at it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Keep an eye out this weekend for an M. Night Shyamalan ranking. I'm going to rank all of his films once I watch the three that I've been avoiding for, what, like a decade now. So thank you guys, as always, for watching. But like and share this video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that ranking this weekend. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.